Okay, so we're going to look at some gravity effects using drag and drop. So you can see here I have a really basic game. I've created a rim. Um, that rim, as we've seen before, I have made sure that my width and my height use powers of two. So taking two, double it, double it, double it. Keep doubling until you've got a number that you're happy with. I've created two sprites. Um, I'm going to go and click on those now. There we go. So we have our sprite of player. So if I go into my workspace and double click, it is just like a little winged person who's going to jump around the screen. Um, and I also have a basic platform, which is just a solid block. Now that solid block is going to provide me with all of my collision. So looking at how I'm going to do this, I'm going to create two objects, one for my platform, one for my player. My solid object is for later uh, because I want to be able to collide with some other objects as well. But for now, we're just going to go into object player. Um, if I just close everything down for now, you can see there, I just have an object player and I've selected the sprite. Um, nothing else has been done to it. Same for the platform. Now the platform, um, again, I haven't actually done anything to this. Uh, again, later on, I'm going to use this as a uh, solid, uh, but this actually doesn't have any code. It is just an object on the screen. So in here, uh, in my rim, which is up here, uh, I have a background, which I have set as light blue. I have an instance layer. Now the instances layer is where I have taken my object of my platform, dragged those on. Um, let's just pop another one in here. So we've got to try and get through this one. So you can see, you can change the the shape and, and style of these. So basically they're like little collision sections. Um, and then I have another instance over here for my player. So I've separated the platforms and the player. <clears throat> so everything for the collision is going to work inside our object um, of our player. So inside player object, there we go. Um, I have a number of different things. Now I have some events. So I have a create event, a step, a draw GUI. Now the draw GUI is to help me with testing. I have key down for my left and right uh, keys. And I also have a space bar. So let's start off with the create event. So over here, what I have done is to create a, a variable called VSPD. VSPD, vertical speed. Um, don't want to have to write lots of stuff. Um, and there's also an inbuilt variable called VSPD. So VSPD is quite a useful one. And what I've done is I've set this to minus five. So that means that is sort of my jump and my falling speed. Uh, but this means that I can then use that across my program. And if I want to speed it up, I only need to change that value rather than having to go through everything in the whole program and change things. So I'm going to set the speed initially to my vSpeed. So you can see there, vSpeed is minus five. My actual speed is now set to that value. I have set my initial value of jump. So I've created a variable called jump, and I have put this to be true. So basically, because I have set my person up in the air, I want them to fall down. Um, and in order to fall, they need to be in the process of either jumping or falling. And I've also set the gravity. And in this case, I've set it to 0 0.3. So it's not too quick, um, but it's quick enough for me to be able to play. So when you have created all of these, the next thing to do is to make sure that you've got your left and right movement going. Um, so for this one, all I've done is I've set an instance variable um, for V speed to be positive, and this is relative. So this is basically moving backwards and forwards. Um, so this will change the X coordinate by either uh, minus five, or in this case, it, would, it will change it by minus five. And when we go right, it will minus minus five. Now, if you minus a minus, what you're doing is you're actually adding. 
So again, this is relative and this is going to allow me to move left and right. Once I did that, what I did was to create the step event. Now the step event is going to be probably the most complicated bit. So I'll walk you through each section. I've started this with an if object at place. This is basically detecting collision. Now there is an event for if I have collided, but I want to use an else on this. So I've done this in the step and I have if I have collided with the object platform and I've used relative for the X, the X doesn't really make any difference, um, <clears throat> but I also use relative for the, uh, for the Y and this is where we have the vertical speed. The vertical speed is I'm dropping down. If that vertical speed corresponds to the Y, then we have made a collision. Those do need to be relative. So if I have collided with an object, I want to know if I am currently jumping. So if jump is true, then, and we know it would be true when we first start falling because we set it to true back in the create. So we fall down, jump is already true. Um, when we hit the platform, we set the speed to zero, so we're not going to move anymore. We set the gravity to zero, so we don't get dragged through the platform. And then we set the jump to false. We're no longer jumping, falling, whatever it is that we, we want to be doing. Now, if we're not at a platform, what I've done is I've used this else block here and popped that underneath, and you can see there, it creates like this little else at the bottom. So if I'm not at a platform, I need to set the gravity back up to 0.3. And I also need to set the jump to true. And this else actually allows me to walk off the edge of platform. So if I'm no longer touching the platform, it allows me to fall. That jump could be better named. It could also be fall. Um, so that is it that we would need to do for um, actually moving. The other thing we want to do is to make sure that we have a space bar. Now, the space bar, in this case, this is one of the really good reasons for using a variable called jump, because if jump is false, so if I'm actually on a platform, then I can set my jump to true. My vertical speed is going to be V speed times two. I want to make it jump in the air. It's double the amount um, that I can move left to right. And again, that means if you can make yourself move quicker, you can jump quicker too without having to change any of the values. But if I can jump, then I also want to set my gravity up. So I'm setting that there. However, if I am already jumping or if I'm falling, I don't want this to be able to happen. I don't want to be able to jump if I'm in midair, because in this case, I want to um, look at actual physics and hit a platform, be able to move up and then go back down again. If I'm already in the air, I can't jump again. So the, now one of the things that you are going to need to do when you are designing your games, especially for iMedia, is that you need to be able to create a flow chart showing the logic of what you have created. Now, because we are creating quite a simple game, it's still worthwhile looking at how, quite how complicated the flowchart might actually end up. So this is a really good time to pause the video, have a look at the flowchart that you can see in front of you, and also see if you can match it to some of the code that you've just seen. Just bear in mind, as you look through the flowcharts, that each time you create one of these, you don't necessarily have to put your entire game in one big flowchart. You can split them up into smaller, more manageable pieces. Remember, we're using decomposition for each section. So you can say, this is what's going to happen, and then we're going to move on to this next flowchart and plan that in a separate one. But for now, have a look, see if you can match up the code that you've just seen to what you can see on screen. So the final thing I've done is this draw GUI, and that is simply putting in a value here um, of what jump is. So this is allowing me to do some testing, and I would really recommend that you use these draw values while you're coding your game, because you can actually see the values of things happening. So I'm going to actually add a couple more of these. These are in the drawing section. I'm going to draw another value. 
and I'm going to show you the V speed. That's going to go in there, V speed. You can see that's a built-in variable. Oh, thank you very much for doing that scan. Um, and this one, 20, and the Y, let's bring that down. So at 15, maybe, 25. And I'll do the same underneath for H speed. So I tend to put the variable name inside the caption or give myself um, something which is going to be meaningful. There we go, H speed. And again, 20 from X and add 15. So 35, 40. Okay, if I made these relative, they would follow my player around. So let's see what's happening here. So now we've gone through all the code. You can see there, there's jump, there's my vertical speed, and there's my horizontal speed. So off I go. And as I jump, as I go up, it's going negative. As I come down, it goes positive. And then I'm going to move across. And I'm going to keep jumping on those platforms, keep jumping on the platform. This one's a little bit trickier because I can't, you can see, I can't actually jump through the platform because of that if object at place. So it stops me from going both through a platform and also um, jumping all the way down. So there we go, all the way down. Now, if I then walked off the edge of this platform, it then just allows me to go um, all the way down. I'm actually going to rerun that, get to one of those higher platforms and just walk off. So there we go. One, two, whoop, three. Now there is a bit of a weird collision going on here and that's because I haven't done the H speed. Um, and so if you wanted it to not go through the sides, you would then also do a if object place at this, uh, the H speed for your X. But if I go off the edge here, you can see it just drops. And that's because it jumped. Um, you can see there, jump is still one. I can't then press the button. Um, and my poor V speed, it is keep keeps going, keeps going. Um, and I am just plummeting through space at this stage. OK, so that is how you can create platforms with um, setting your um, your horizontal and your vertical speed. Um, it is in the step event. You want to make sure that you are checking for an object to the platform and making sure that if you use an if, um, you can also use an else.